Finish last class right here. I would say don't leave it as VT. I knew V, I just didn't have time to write it down. So where's our V? T plus R3, negative 1, 0. So that's how I would leave it right there. Yes, hopefully. Yeah, it's recording now. All right. We're going to intersect a line and a plane now. So when would a line not intersect a plane? What? So we can use the word parallel, but so let's look at the normal. So I try to draw this line parallel to the plane. Now one of the issues is there's a lot of lines parallel to a plane. So maybe the parallel line goes that direction instead of the other direction. Or it could be somewhere in between. How in the world do we know if we have a line that's parallel to a plane? It never touches any other lines. So it would have a, so we have a normal vector. We'll look at the vector v, the direction vector of the line. So if these are perpendicular, then we'd be parallel. Is that right? That seems so. Well, we better give this L for the line, P for the plane. Well, better just write the whole word. We use L and P other times as well. So line is parallel. Parallel to plane when n is orthogonal to v. So we can use the upside down t to write orthogonal. Uh, we have a better way to determine if two vectors are orthogonal. How can we do it? Take the dot product, then if it equals zero. Dot product. So if your dot product is zero, you are orthogonal. So that is the same as n dot v equals the number zero. Is that what? Um, is that what? Because um, I guess when it equals zero, it's like the intersection point of two lines or something. No, the dot product. What's the best way to think about it? Probably as a projection, the dot product is used in the projection to see how much of one vector is going in the same direction as another vector. So if you have perpendicular vectors, none of the first vector is going in the direction of the second vector. So that's one way to think about it. Uh, another way to think about it, if you have the angle in between, the uh, cosine theta is u dot v divided by the magnitudes, like that. So what theta value, uh, what theta has a cosine value of 0? Pi over 2. Pi over 2. So when our angle is pi over 2, our dot product will be 0. So there's another way to think about it. And if I intersected a line that was parallel with the plane, there's only two outcomes. So if your line is parallel to your plane, what are your two possible types of intersections? I keep wanting to say orthogonal, but I don't know if we're using that word in this chapter or not. Uh, no, well, I want to, what, if, if I intersected, you can use that word. Uh, 
if I intersected a parallel line with a plane, there's only two possible outcomes. So let's say that the line does not touch the plane. That's one outcome. So one plane is, for example, a table. And then we have a line that's parallel with the table, but above or below. So it will never intersect. What if you have a parallel line that actually touches the plane? Always it's always touching the plane. So there's kind of two extremes when you intersect parallel uh, line and plane. You either get the whole line or nothing. So those are the two possibilities. So real quick, what you're saying is you can even have like a plane right there, or another plane right there, or a plane right there, and another plane like right there. Yeah, well, one of them is a line that we're. Yeah, Last so class we were we were two, doing two planes. Yeah. Now we're thinking about line and a plane. Okay. And we're still using the word parallel. Which actually means, if we look back, that actually means the normal is perpendicular or orthogonal to the direction the line's going to further confuse everybody. It's just the way that it works out, unfortunately. <laughs> parallel lines, uh, a line is parallel to a plane if its direction is perpendicular to the normal. Maybe a better way to think about it, the normal of a plane is perpendicular to every vector in the plane. So we're kind of using the a vector is in the plane if it's perpendicular to the normal, meaning that it's vaguely parallel to the direction the line's going. I say vaguely because you could pick a vector in the plane that's still perpendicular, but I wouldn't say that it's parallel to that line, okay. even though they exist on different planes. They'll never intersect. That's probably a better way to think about it. Oh, real quick? Yeah. In 12.3, question 12, thank you for Yoda. That was awesome. All right. That was an awesome <laughs> question. There is no try, there's only do. <laughs> yes. We're aware that's not recorded now, right? Yeah. Yeah, Yoda's amazing. <laughs> Whether or not I'm being recorded, that's my opinion. All right, so when the plane and the line are parallel, the intersection is either nothing, which we write as, you could write as the empty set, or the line. So basically, if your plane and your line are parallel, it's kind of boring. It's either in the uh, plane or not. So let's uh, do examples that we don't have this situation happening. So what happens if you have a plane and a line that are not parallel? They intersect at some point. They intersect at some point. So can we say they'll intersect at exactly one point? Yeah. So they should intersect at exactly one point. So Unless we, the line is on the plane. Well, even if the line, well, yeah. if the line is not parallel to the plane, it can't be on the plane. Because yeah. then it would be parallel. Yeah. All right, so when the plane and line are not parallel, there is exactly one intersection point. You can draw this out, but it's kind of obvious how it's going to look. You have some line going straight through a plane. Well, I sh maybe straight might be misleading. It doesn't have to go through perpendicularly. It can cross at any, really any angle. So let's go ahead and do an example. I want to intersect eight thirds plus two T minus two T and one plus T and three X plus two Y plus 6z equals 6. Is that first one a vector or a plane? 
Yes. <laughs> Vectors are points. He's just referring because it looks like parentheses and also brackets. Yeah, it doesn't matter. So in this case, <coughs> so a line has a point and a direction vector. So that's why I say sort of both. We're going to rewrite it so it looks more like the line formula that we're used to. So which one's a line, which one's a plane? Is the first object the line or the plane? No, one of these is the line, one's a plane. Okay. The second one is the line, the first one's a plane. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. <laughs> Did I? No, it's not a 50 50 shot. Oh. Did we ever parameterize planes? <laughs> no. Yeah, no. <laughs> no, we didn't. Yeah, yeah. We parameterized lines. So the first one is a line, the second one is a plane. So let's write the line in the way that, uh, that I prefer. So we're going to write the line in L of t equals v of t plus p naught. So we're going to write it in this form. What is the point on the line? OK, what's the direction? What is v? OK, so let's pretend that you're confused about that. And let's break this down. So in the line, there's a constant term and a non-constant term. So the middle did not have a t value, so I'm going to write plus 0 t. So I am writing how much, uh, what our, uh, we call it direction term is right there. So there was no t right there, so I just did plus zero t. So it looks consistent. Now I'm going to write the t part first, which is two, zero, one, t. You can do this in two steps, uh, but I'm going to skip, I'm just going to do it in one step. Plus, now the constant left over is eight thirds, negative two. 1. So if you add up on the right side, you should get the left. You got to distribute your t first. So you have 2t, 0t, 1t, plus 8 thirds, minus 2, 1. Add uh, those together. Because you said that the right side should equal the left side, just like if you work backwards, then you should be able to get back to the, the right side of the equal sign. Yeah, they're all these three are the same. Oh, okay. I'm just showing you the intermediate step of y. So there is a constant term and a linear term in a line for each coordinate. The constant term, all the constant terms together are the original point in your line. All the linear uh, coefficients added together are the direction. Or you could say the linear term is the t times the direction right there. OK. So I'll write the line in this form right here. 201 t plus 8 thirds minus 2, 1. So how would I know if this is parallel to the plane or not? So I have to do v dot. Now, how do I get the normal vector out of the plane? So what is the normal? So it'll be 3, 2, 6. So that's our x, y, z coefficients. n equals 3, 2, 6. So I could determine if they are parallel if I dot them 
and get zero. So we'll dot these together. So our V is 201 and our N is 326. So it should be pretty clear that you get a positive number without adding and multiplying because all that stuff's not very fun. I just want to know zero or not zero. So I can say here, not zero. So we're expecting one point of intersection. How in the world do I find that point? All this work we did really doesn't help us find the point. Everything you need is right here. So we kind of set them equal to each other. The problem is one of them is a real number equation. The other one's a vector equation. So that would be highly illegal to just set a vector equal to a number. So we can't just set them equal. I see an x right here. What can I fill in for x? Maybe you can replace x with something t. How about the x-coordinate? Oh. So we're going to basically substitute. And we're going to take our parameterized x and put that in. And we're going to take our parameterized y and put that in, parameterized z and put that in. And then we'll have one equation with one variable t. So x, y, and z are going to turn to just linear functions of t. And it should be an easy equation to solve. So again, I'm going to take, use a highlighter here. So I'm going to take my x value and place it in the x coordinate, the y value in the y, and z right in the z. So let's go ahead and do all that right now. So we're going to plug in x equals 8 thirds plus 2t, y is negative 2, and z is 1 plus t. And solve for t. Do I have any algebra mistakes? So if I asked you to intersect a plane in a line, you told me t is negative one third. What in the world does that mean? Means you're not done yet. Means we're not done yet. So how do I turn that into a point? Yep, we know how to turn t values into points. We got it right there. So we just put t in for every t right there and we'll get an x, y, z point. So go ahead and figure out what point we have.
first line is that eight birds? Yes. Should be positive two thirds. So that is intersecting planes and lines. They're either the entire the same thing, they don't intersect at all, or one point. <coughs> now, just like that soccer analogy, you can't just start kicking. So you have to know: Am I asking you for distance? If I am, what two objects are we finding the distance between? So we looked at, I think, distance between two line, no, a point and a line before. So we did a point and a line before. I think we did point and a point to a line. I don't know. We've done a lot of distances and intersections. So you have to know, is it a distance, is it an intersection, and then what are the two objects that I'm asking you about? So if it is, like, when you go to line, it's Ah, that's a good question. Uh, what you will have at the, uh, you will have right here when you plug it in, you won't get one answer for t. So if you're not, if they don't intersect, you'll have no solution, meaning you'll get like 6 equals 0 or something like You'll get some inconsistent solution. If it is uh, the entire line, you'll get something that cancels out, like 0 equals 0, and it will be true regardless of what t is. So you'll either get inconsistent, which will feel very much like doing solving linear system and getting inconsistent, or you'll get uh, that it doesn't matter what t is. Uh, whereas if you get t as a single value, then that's the one point that you're hit. Well, that's the, t the t value for the one point that's intersecting. So we'll go for a uh, distance between a point and a plane now. So we can draw out the situation pretty easily. You have a plane, there'll be a point. Now we talked about how to get a point on the plane. It's not too difficult. If you're just dealing with one plane, you can fix two coordinates and then figure out what your third coordinate needs to be. So to get one point on a plane is pretty easy and quick to get. You just fix two coordinates and figure out what your third is. There's a really good chance that point you are trying to get is not directly below the point that's randomly uh, not on your plane. So you just picked essentially a random point on your plane. So very likely, this distance will not be the minimum distance right there. So we're assuming we did not pick the perfect point. That's the minimum distance away. How in the world do I figure out the actual distance? So the distance I want, what am I, well, the distance I want will be the straight line distance right here. <coughs> We have a vector that points that direction, but it's probably not the right length. What vector points the direction the blue one's going? The normal. So the normal might be too long or too short. However, it's going the exact direction we want. So we have a vector going the right way. What do I have to do to scale this vector up or down so it's the right height? So we are going to multiply by a scalar, and the scalar we're going to use is the one that comes out of the projection formula. So we're going to project this vector here. So let's give these points a name. I'll call this, um, did I use Q for the point off the plane or off the line before? Or P? When you cross one line to another, the normal vector that comes off of that? Is that a unit vector? Necessarily? Not necessarily, no. Okay. It better not be a zero vector, because then you're not describing a plane. Okay. So that's the only, the only thing I can say is it should, not, it should never be the zero vector. So a normal vector should not have length zero, because they won't 
they're used to point a direction. So if you have a zero vector, you're not, you're failing at pointing in a direction. But other than that, they can have any length they want. Okay. So you can have a huge, a normal vector that's like 10 trillion magnitude, or one that's one ten trillionth. Okay. And they're just as good. So the first thing we would do is find our normal vector, make sure that it is a, indeed a unit vector, then use the other equation that we're about to use to find the scalar to multiply by that unit. Um, yeah, it turns out it doesn't matter how long the normal vector is. As long as it's not zero, we'll be okay. okay. So we're about to project. Uh, we'll call the point on the plane. I'll just use P naught for the point on the plane. So P naught is any point on the plane. N is normal to the plane. So the only assumption I'm making is the magnitude's not zero. So you're gonna have problems if your normal's, well you're not on a plane if your normal is zero. Would the point on the plane be moving to as well? No. No, the point on the plane will not be moving. So P is any point on the plane, N is a normal, and Q is the point off the plane. <coughs> Then our distance from point to plane, from Q to the plane, is, so let's describe this vector right here. So we're going to have this vector, so the vector I drew is P naught Q right there. So we're gonna project this vector onto N and then find the magnitude. So we're going to project P naught Q onto N. And this, we'll be finding the magnitude of this. So let's write out the formula. That's P naught Q dot N divided by magnitude N squared. And this will be a scalar right here, multiplied by the vector N. So that uh, dot product over magnitude squared, that is the projection formula right there from pre-calculus class. Did I write down the projection formula in this class? I think I did. Maybe I didn't. Look, it would it would have had to come from dot product or later because it used the dot product. You said it. Oh yeah, we. Y equals p vector q cross v over v. So here's the definition is right here. I just put magnitudes around it. That's the definition. So I'll just erase the defin uh, the magnitudes. That's what a projection is. Or maybe it's better if I write it with U's and V's. So if you forgot the projection, proj of U onto V is U dot V over magnitude U squared. That is a number multiplied, oops, multiplied by the vector V. So that's the projection formula that we're using here. Well, that's the only projection formula out there. OK. We are going to get the magnitude. So let's use our algebra skills with magnitude. So first of all, how do scalars behave with magnitudes? You can bring them outside as long as they're positive. Or if they're not, just put absolute values on them. So let's move that outside. Magnitude n squared, that's definitely positive. Uh, but that dot product could very well be negative, so we will leave the absolute values around that. And all that's left inside is magnitude of the vector n. And now we can use some easy algebra cancellation. We got n, 
the magnitude divided by the square of the magnitude. And that will just cancel out to uh, 1 over the magnitude of n. So that's our distance right there. Now I want to warn you, this looks a lot like the formula, the easy formula for distance between a line and a point. So if you flip back two pages, what's the difference between this and the distance formula for a line and a point? So yeah, if we use the projection, if we use the easy version, there's basically a cross product at the top. So the only difference between this and the other formula, there's a cross product instead of a dot product. So you want to be careful. These formulas are almost identical, yet they're getting very different distance between two very different types of objects. So the formulas look really similar. So we'll write down this distance. The distance from Q to the plane is P naught Q dot N absolute value divided by magnitude N. So the geometry area under cheat sheet is growing bigger and bigger. I think that was, oh, let's do one example with this distance. So do we have a point and a plane, or a point and a line? It's pretty obvious we have a point. What's the other object? Plane. It's plane. So you need to be able to tell planes and lines apart, or you're going to have serious trouble. So this is a plane right here. So I want you to find the distance between the point and the plane. And everything you need is on the board here. You get to pick any point in the plane you want. I don't care. Make sure it's in the plane. Don't use 001. I'm going to use that one. Oh. All right, you really want to use it? Fine. Don't use 030. I'm going to use 030. You're using that one too? <laughs> OK. <laughs> so do not pick this P0. There's infinite other choices. If you're not feeling creative, 001 works just fine in this plane. 200 is another really good one. All the other ones require actual arithmetic, so don't use the other ones. <laughs> so compute everything out, and hopefully our answers will agree at the end. We should get the same distance. It shouldn't matter what point you take.
and you'll have a different Q minus P naught because you, you're choosing a different P naught. So your answer won't agree until the end, basically. So don't expect your intermediate steps to, they're similar, but they won't be the same. So your dot product should have been 6 or negative 6, depending on what you chose. Anybody not get 6 or negative 6? Oh, OK. Oh, I wrote N instead of V, but it's the same. Uh, okay. I'm just doing that to confuse you. Sorry. I'll try to stop. It's the only vector, really. I mean, there's the vector P not Q. Okay. It's own name. So what was your Q minus P naught? Six. Oh, Q minus P naught? Yeah. Two, zero, zero. Isn't that three, zero, negative one? Or no, zero, three, negative one? Okay. Wait, don't look at that one. Zero, zero, oh, there's, all right. Two, oh, one. one. Yeah, two, zero, zero. Yeah, two, zero, zero. All right, so if you choose a different point on your plane, your dot product is either what I got or negative what I got. How come it will be the negative of what you got? What's the negative? Uh, it could be that if, let's hey. see. Off the top of my head, I'm not sure of that situation. I can tell you if you flip your normal upside down, that would do it. Um, maybe they're all either positive or negative. It just depends on if your normal's flipped. Uh, dot products generally are positive when the angle is less than pi over 2, and negative if the angle is more than pi over 2, and 0 if it is pi over 2. That's how you can tell if two vectors are uh, basically going to oppose each other or be somewhat closer together. So positive dot products mean they are closer together. Negative dot products mean they're more than uh, 90 degrees apart. So that's one way to see if they're more canceling each other out or helping each other. Does that make sense? So if the dot product's positive, they, are, they have a smaller angle. If dot product is negative, 
they're actually working against each other. And if it's zero, they're perpendicular or orthogonal, meaning one's not helping or hurting the other one. So the last topic, I'm not going to do any problems on it because it's uh, easy to do. Angle between two planes. So we intersected two planes. Now I want to know the angle between two planes. So you can think of the intersection. How would I get the angle between these two planes? So I'll look at the normals and then find the angle between them. So just like before, I'll try to use the same colors. So we got one normal going one direction, another normal going some other direction. So the angle that we want here will be the theta between the normals. So that'll be the normal the angle between the planes. So angle between planes is the angle between normals. So that's the end of vectors. Well, that's never the end of vectors, but that's the end of geometry of vectors. And the next time we see vectors will be in uh, two sections where we'll be doing calculus with vectors. <laughs>